So today's video is going to be a little different and I I am very fond of keyboard shortcuts but I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea. Everyone is like, why? Well, some people are like, why do I have to learn this? This is ridiculous and I don't think you have to learn anything. But I have found keyboard shortcuts to be very valuable in my workflows, both in LogSeq and other programs. I see there's a couple of engineers who watch the channel and you know, if you've ever used the CAD program, having your left hand typing commands and your right hand moving your mouse super quick. If you use PowerPoint, I mean, keyboard shortcuts will save you hours of time. Microsoft Excel, any of those programs, absolute game changers. So this is where the, the idea of the one stuttering mind comes in now, where I'm gonna sort of, at the end of the video, jump to PowerPoint because I think there's some overlap here. I'm actually really hoping that like at least one person will find some value from the many hours of slogging that I have done um, on PowerPoint. So this is just the sort of guide that I like to have when I start a program as I like to have, you know, what are the best shortcuts condensed that I can learn that will just help me to get around really quickly. And a lot of these are similar to, to Rome, I believe. I haven't worked on Rome for a few months now, so I don't actually remember, but I'm sure if you see a video, there'll be some similarities. So yeah, trying something new here. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I, like, as I said, if, if you find this valuable, I'll be, it'll make me very, very happy. So one more thing before we start, I've just added this little section here called disclaimers. So for those of you who are eagle eyed, you'd see that it wasn't there before. But first thing is this isn't a fully comprehensive list. It's just the ones that I use. Um, and this actually relates to the third point, which is all of this is accessible via the question mark button, which is in the bottom right of your screen, which is currently behind my face. So if you just click on that, it'll bring up all of these and more, and you can and look at some of the ones that might not be listed here. So the third thing is that these are Windows specific. I use a Windows machine, but I don't think there are major differences beyond the fact that control will be the command key on, on a Mac, but I'm not 100% sure of that, so don't hold me to it. And then the last thing is I've got a, a program to do some key tracking, but when you push Alt or Shift individually, it doesn't work. When you use them in combination for some reason, it does work. So just something to be aware of. So let's get started. The first useful um, shortcuts are all about navigating around your database. So if I go and I open this bullet, if I want to go back a page, I can go Alt left, and that takes me to the last pages that I've been on. And then if I want to go forward a page, I say Alt right. This one seems to uh, sometimes be a little bit buggy, so maybe not the best start, but anyways, let's get into a few more. So Control U is how I search pages. So if I want to say search my personal page, I can just go there and then scroll down left with up and down and just choose that page. And I can go back to the page that I was on. Okay, I don't know why it's closing that one, but um, if I want to go to my journal page, oh, and another thing that I can use um, Control U for is to create a page. So if I want to create a work page or work 2.0, I can just say, new page and it takes me there and then we go back okay cool so the the next one that i want to go back to often is my journal page because that's where i'm just entering stream of consciousness and yeah it's uh it's a good one to remember is alt j so that just takes me back to my journal page and now i just go alt back or alt left and that takes me back to the page that i was working on cool and then the right sidebar that brings up the sidebar on the on the right because you know it's nice to have a split screen so if i just if i exit this and say tr that brings up the right sidebar and i can look at my page graph and i you know can zoom around with this now this brings me to another point i'm just going to close this so tr again and that's the alternative to the roam left sidebar so i know there's a feature request for the left sidebar in in LogSeq as there is in Rome and lots of users like that and I think I like it too but there is a great alternative for that whilst you wait and that's just using contents which is TC if I escape that and I say TC and that contents is a permanent page and you can see there I've got all these different shortcuts that I can go to so work and then personal if I want to take away the contents from that right sidebar just look at other things I can say TC again and it takes it away. And TC. 
The other thing I didn't do was, you know, you can open a page in that right sidebar by just pushing shift click and that opens the page in the right sidebar. Okay, cool. So let me go back and you go TC, oh, TC, and that takes me to my contents I can go back to my, what I was working on. Great. So when I'm done with my contents, then I can just say TR, let's just escape first. Sorry. That's a good, perhaps a good first shortcut to everything is escape first. So escape and then TR and that closes it. And now I have everything where I need it again. Okay. Then the essentials. As, as you all know, I think LogSeq is like Chrome. It uses the, the square brackets to backlink. So in order to do that, it's just entering two square brackets and it opens up um, the blocks so that you can enter your link. So your link here. Great. And then I can go to that page and then it's automatically linked to where I was working. So another thing you can do is you can you want me to type your second link here. Link here. Now instead of you know going here and saying square brackets, delete, end, close square brackets, that will work. But a better way to do it is just to highlight the word and then square brackets. Great. So then and then enter and you're good to go. Okay, so the autocomplete menu that is really you know a, a must use function and that's just forward slash and that opens up all of your your autocomplete options so your templates are in here you know all these different block features or all, all these different features which there's a, probably a whole few videos on these um but i'm not going to do those now or maybe ever but yeah just a great way to access all these different things that you might want to access you know current time, date picker, today, yesterday functions, really just, a, you know, for many, many workflows, this forward slash is going to be a game changer. And then the toggling of the to-do blocks. So, as you know, the to-do, it's either now, later, or doing. I like to have to-do, doing, done. So if I just say control enter here, yeah. <laughs> funny that my database is set to doubt now, later, done but let me go here to settings there's actually a way to access settings quickly and it's not a shortcut that i've added here because it's not one that i use but to do doing cool so then that just control enter again control enter control enter and that's how we toggle through them and that's done great so moving blocks around so these are your traditional um indentation type um shortcuts so tab just shift tab just indents your blocks so let me just use tab and show you what, what it does tab and tab that one too and then shift tab and indents those blocks so those are the first two yeah tab and then shift tab just to move blocks around and it's really nice to quickly be able to indent things so that you can get them in, or to get the structure that you want because indentation really helps structuring your workflow and then moving blocks up and down that is I think it's similar to PowerPoint where you just say Alt Shift Up and Alt Shift Down and then that moves your blocks up and down as I'm currently doing now. So there you go. Then expanding and collapsing blocks. So this is one of those ones that I've used before which you know haven't introduced and I guess that's why I'm doing the video because there was a whole bunch of things that I saw in the videos that I thought it would be great if someone explained that to me. So hopefully this helps someone in that position. So. Um, control down and control up is how you expand, expand and collapse these blocks. So if, I, if I'm on the, the, the root block, I can say control up and it collapses it. And if I go control down, it expands it. Why is this nice? So if I expand this, you can see I can have a whole bunch of information nested underneath these thumbnails. So you know, I could have like the heading here and then the details underneath okay so that's really useful for nesting things and yeah so some some other nice ones that I like to use changing theme I change a the theme every night um, so I, I just escape I go TT that takes me to my dark theme very nice much easier on the eyes than the white theme but not as great for videos so there we go, you go back. 
And then the usual bolding one is Control B. So I think many people are familiar with that. Now, the only problem there is I can't actually use the same function to unbold it as it works in most applications. But if I do that, it goes to italics. It just adds more, um, more asterisks on either side. So then staying in the same block, this is just an important one. You know, if you want to, most times when you enter, it creates a new block. And if you want to say, sort of continue thoughts, shift enter on another line. Um, so that, that's how you do it. There is a feature where you can actually toggle if enter creates a new block or just goes onto the, uh, the other line, but I, I don't actually use that feature. So not included in this video. And then block autocomplete. So this is the this is what the pros use to enter the advanced queries, etc. So uh, my face is going to get in the way here, but if you just scroll down there, you see there's a, there's a bunch of different um, different blocks which you can just see behind my face, which is good. Okay. And then thoughts and undo redo. So that that's your typical Control Z Control Y. I think at the moment I'm experiencing it to be a little bit buggy and it creates. Um, extra blocks or you know it's just not working as one would expect perfectly there's been bugs bugs reported on on the forum so i'm sure that the the support for that will improve over time so what i want to do now is shift gears a little bit and go to powerpoint now this is completely unrelated to logseq but i think it's more to indicate the power of learning shortcuts and simplifying your workflows in that way and I worked as a professional slide maker for two and a half years um, and I have wasted many, many hours aligning boxes. And my thought behind doing this part of the video was that if I can help one person to not have to drag boxes ever again, that would be me done and happy for this video. So if that person is you, please leave a comment below if this helps you. Getting into PowerPoint, when you typically get into PowerPoint, you'll see that you've got your quick access toolbar above your ribbon. Now, a lot of people don't use a quick access toolbar, but this is, this is really where the secret is. You've got to get your quick access toolbar underneath your ribbon, first of all, show below the ribbon. And you've also got to set it up so that you can use keyboard shortcuts to activate the different menu options very quickly. So Microsoft Office products use the alt key to to activate the the keyboard shortcut so if i say alt here in there alt you know i can navigate around so that's alt home alt ji whatever i can i can navigate around that menu that ruin menu so it's it sounds it's one of those things that sounds ridiculous when you like look at it you're like why would i ever want to do that but if you can learn to 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 simplify your workflows by memorizing the shortcuts that you use all the time. It will save you seconds on every hour over the course of years. So I've zoomed into my quick access toolbar so that I can show you what the different functions are. So my first one is just a simple rectangle and that's just a good way to get us started. And it opens up the, the rectangle um, function that I can use my mouse to create the rectangle. And that's just another thing that you, you can learn to maximize the, the combination between your your left hand with the keyboard and your right hand with the mouse. And then Alt 2 opens up my colors. Alt 3 opens up, so let me change color there. Alt 3 opens up my you know, line colors. Or, and, I can, and I'm using my mouse to select it, but you can actually navigate around just your keyboard there. Alt 4, let me just say here, I'm use that text, this. Um, okay, that's a terrible color, but anyways. And then I'm not going to go into all of those different things, but that's just like, those are the first four that I use, which is like a very valuable setup for me. Luckily I'm not doing slides too much anymore, but like this is one place where PowerPoint trumps Google slides hands down. Now the key part of getting this thing set up is using these distribute or these alignment buttons and getting them in a certain order. So if I, I'm going to create a whole bunch of different blocks here. Let me just make them blue. So I'll do, uh, let me, Okay, cool. So now I've got five blocks and I, I <laughs> yeah, as I said, I've spent so many hours aligning these things, but if I select all these blocks and then I say alt, it opens up 
the, the menu, which now gives me the shortcut keys, 0, 1, 0, 2, all the way up to 0, 8, which allows me to align the boxes. So 0, 1 is align left, Control Z that, Alt 0, 2 is align center, Alt 0, 3 is align right. And Alt 0, 4 is align top, Alt 0, 5 is align middle, Alt 0, uh, 6 is align bottom. Okay, then Alt 0, 7 is to distribute vertically. That didn't show that much of a difference there. Okay, so for the last two, I've just created this little setup here, which will help visualize a bit better. So if I want to distribute vertically, Alt 0, 7, and then it distributes them all vertically. And then if I want to distribute horizontally, it's Alt 0, 8. So those are your PowerPoint shortcuts. Just going back to my quick access toolbar, how do I do that? I need to right click down here and then say um, more commands. And then you have to um, customize it so that it gives you that same setup. So just to add how you actually get those, um, those different options in there, if you go to your popular commands or any commands, you can search all your commands, you can just add whichever ones you want there to be brought in. So I say add or remove once it's in there, so remove, and then I can just move them up and down with the right arrow keys. So that's how you set it up and order it. So going back to my, my LogSeq database, all of the PowerPoint shortcuts that I've used are there at the bottom. And that's just when you have your quick access toolbar properly set up. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I am going to leave a survey in the description below, which is just one question, not asking for emails, nothing. Just if you are interested in more PowerPoint videos, then just go into that survey and click yes. Um, there's no, no option there. So if you're not interested, don't worry about it, just ignore it. But if there's sufficient interest, and I think let me put a benchmark by 50 people, then I'll make some more PowerPoint videos. If not, I'll continue making LogSeq videos or whatever comes along into my brain. So thanks again for watching and yeah, I really hope this helped you.